This Week in Startups is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your idea into a new website. Go to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code twist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Embroker's startup insurance program helps startups secure the most important types of insurance at a lower cost and with less hassle. Save up to 20% off of traditional insurance today at Embroker.com slash twist. While you're there, get an extra 10% off using offer code twist. And Lemon.io. Need to speed up your product development without draining your budget? Hire vetted engineers from Europe at Lemon.io. Go to lemon.io slash twist to get 15% off for the first four weeks. All right, everybody, all heck is broken loose. It's Sam Bankman, Freed's FTX exchange. Molly, uh, maybe you could tee up as best you can. Yep. This what has shouldn't. happened. We're having yeah. an emergency podcast for those of you emergency. joining us live. We haven't been live in a while. It's a double red flag situation. Double. I mean, you know, we're... We're going to dive into this, but I think we can safely say that we ha- this is a hinge event in the crypto economy. Sam Bankman frieds FTX exchange is being acquired by its primary competitor, Binance, after what appeared to be a run triggered by Binance on FTX, primarily related to FTT, if I'm doing this right, the currency that FTX created. And then now there's this buyout in process where you have two competitors, like they just basically fought to the death, like Godzilla and King Kong, and Godzilla in the form of CZ at Binance is emerging victorious. There are still, however, very large questions about Alameda Research, SBF's hedge fund and market maker related to FTT. It's all an insane hot mess. Guys, tell me what I got right and what I got wrong here and what's happening. Yeah, let's go to Sunny because I thought all of this stuff was supposed to be on the blockchain and completely transparent. Isn't that the value of crypto? <laughs> yes, Why no, is it but so confusing exchange- what's going on? These here? exchanges I like are centralized. Makes so you bastard face too. He's like, yeah, these exchanges are centralized and they're showing that they they you know have some weakness. Um, no, that that's mostly correct. Let me just add a couple other interesting tidbits because they they add the right color to it. So Binance was actually uh, an investor in FTX. And that's how they ended up with their FTT token. So as the two started out in the early days, they were quite friendly. And then uh, and over the course of the years, and I think uh, sometime maybe within the last 24 months, Binance wanted to sell its stake in, um, in FTX. And FTX gave uh, Binance FTT tokens, roughly about $2 billion worth of tokens for, for, the, right. for their you know, stake that they had in there. And then what subsequently happened is FTX has grown and we've seen super high profile, right? They have stadium sponsorships. They have um, F1 sponsorships. They have Tom Brady, um, you know, all kinds of great stuff. Had, 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 had. okay. Well, they still might, but, um, you know, what, what also happened is Sam and has spent a lot of time in Washington and talking about crypto regulation. In fact, we even spoke about that in the last podcast. J. Cal actually did an interview with SPF and he can touch on this. And what really hit the head in the last, say, seven days was an article came out that was questioning the assets, the balance sheet of Alameda, and that the balance sheet of Alameda was holding a lot of uh, FTT tokens. And that also pointed back to some liabilities associated with FTX. And ultimately, that also tied back into some word, I guess, CZ, who's the founder of Binance, was getting about what Sam was saying about him uh, at, you know, on, uh, in Washington. And that led to him you know, basically saying, hey, I want to sell my tokens. And that started the run on um, the business in the last uh, 24, 48 hours here. Right. Vinny, yeah. what is your take on this insane chess match? And what just happened, because it does seem like Sam overplayed his hand and maybe flew a little close to the sun, the sun in this uh, metaphor being regulators. Is that what is the spark here is that Sam was talking smack about Binance to regulators? And then that made CZ well, go. Are you trying ham. to get into the? Re- are you trying to get into the reason why it unraveled, or are you trying to get to the? Yeah. Like what? 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 what but, but let's fundamentally ask. Like, okay, Sam's a U.S. citizen. He was living in Hong Kong, and then he moved to Bahamas to run his operations. Okay. Why would you do that? 
why would you be operating offshore like that? Because he ran two organizations. He ran Alameda and he mm-hmm. ran FTX. Mm-hmm. And, and these two should have been barred from doing any business with each other. I mean, from a corporate governance perspective, you know, I can t- like you guys know you can't have a you can't have a situation where you're you know you have another another company that's borrowing from a company uh, that w- where you have deposits of funds where you can just issue your own currency like FTT etc. So there was just no like corporate governance across these structures because they were based outside the US and there was no real regulation re- regulatory oversight and and it basically created a mess. Um, if you look at the way that Alameda, I mean, Alameda is a trading organization um, and, and FTX is a trading platform. But it's owned effectively by the same person, and so you, you you know even though there's this illusion of two separate entities, Alameda would invest in crypto projects and companies. Uh, FTX would list the perps, and there's lots of reasons why this is a bad thing. But like they list the perps, a perpetual swaps basically, and allows you to just hedge out your risk. So they would take maybe a a 12 month saft or a 24 month saft. They'd list the perp, and then we just hedge out and make the margin. So they don't really care about the project. They take liquidity out of the market, that sort of thing. So this has been going on for years. This is not news. This is all over Twitter. People have been talking about this for months now. And the bottom line is you had double dealing here, and it eventually unraveled. So let's, yeah, let's break down. Let's start with the relationship between FTX and Alameda that you're alluding to. So for people who don't know, um, and what this kind of looks like, even though these are separate businesses, sister companies, let's say, Alameda's balance sheet included a large amount of FTX's FTT token. In fact, FTT is the well, largest we don't know, asset we don't know what on, on the Alameda balance, balance sheet. We, all we have is like these, we have these rumors of what's on there. And by the way, for, you know, the way balance sheets work is you have 8 billion on the one side, you have 8 billion liabilities on the other side or whatever. Like, it, it's not as simple as like, I mean, I can, you can have a balance sheet with a, with a trillion dollars of liabilities and a trillion dollars of assets and it's a net zero balance sheet. So no matter right. how big the, ba- it's really like, well, what's it, what's the nav? And then right. also, okay, what's well, so the, what's, I should yeah. clarify, this is based on this leaked balance sheet seen by yes. Coindesk, yes. dated June 30th. And, and, and so those, we... numbers don't, those numbers don't look right. For, for example, like the Solana that they've quoted on the balance sheet, there, 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 wasn't, there, there isn't that much lock Solana in the market. So that number is just wrong because they would have to have more lock Solana than w- w- what is out there. So that so number is wrong. So when you see, as, as of June 30th, Alameda holds $3.66 billion of unlocked FTT and $2.16 billion of FTT collateral. If you're saying you think those numbers are wrong, you think... What that they have more? I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I, I'm not saying. I <laughs> okay, think they're wrong. But, here, but here's what, the point, what, what, which is yeah. that that document is what started to create questions, right, about this conflict of interest. The doc, the document basically started off, you know, a rumor mill cycle mm-hmm. where people started digging in, and when people start looking at the actual on-chain wallets and start tracing things, you know, there's a lot of good crypto sleuths out there, and they they find this stuff, and I think it created some sort of a. Uh, a catalyst where CZ was looking at this going, why, why am I holding a half a billion dollars with this FTT, which may not be worth this? And these guys are printing money. They probably don't have, you know, like, like there's no guardrails, right? He, and he he knows just, a bit, just as well as everyone that Alameda and FTT, or FTX are, you know, it, it, two separate entities for legal reasons, but reality is just controlled by the same person uh, mm-hmm. on both sides, even though it has its own CEO. Um, and, you know, if you look, uh, it's very clear. I mean, it's always in hindsight, it's clear, but like, if you go, if you just look back six months, 12 months, the ascent of, of Sam three years from zero to, you know, the next Warren Buffett. Uh, I mean, there's just not that much money to be made in crypto that fast. I mean, you yeah. can't just go and amass $15 billion with a fortune with money in crypto that quickly doing running an exchange for all the reasons. And, you know, so something had to be up. <laughs> well, Someone yeah, so was printing you, money out of, out of nowhere. So you had red flag one, this yep. connection, and the fact that Alameda's balance sheet ap- appeared to include a significant portion of a token that FTX and SBF made up. Issued. So that was <laughs> exactly. issue one, right? Then issue two is SBF starts making a ton of noise. He is buying Let all me of just correct stuff. something quickly. I want to correct yeah, something. Yeah. So they didn't make <laughs> up the token. So Binance has the BNB token, FTX yep. has the FTT token. These tokens are used by traders to reduce fees. There's some utility, people hold it, it's an investable asset. That wasn't the issue. It actually works, you know, there, there's a there's a burn down, there's whatever. The, the, that's not the issue. The issue is it's just not as liquid as it should be 
for the purpose of, they were trying to use it as collateral. So they mm-hmm. would go and say, can we borrow dollars? We'll give you, we'll print $2 billion, $2 billion worth of FTT. It's on chain. Everyone knows it's there. But if you try and sell Two billion worth of FTT in a day to get your, your 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 loan back. You can't. It's not liquid enough. So basically, it's a liquidity issue. And okay. but 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 let's not go get away from the fact that like this couldn't happen in the US legally. Right. You couldn't do this in the US. So then SBF starts to make a bunch of noise. He is rescuing companies. He's also, it seems courting regulation maybe in a way that the community starts to dislike well well well, well. so hold on so mm-hmm. so rescuing companies doesn't mean so the, the blockfi mm-hmm. and and blockfi and ftx or alameda we'll just lump them together for now had a relationship where there was some collateral posted to blockfi he had to save them otherwise the re- mm-hmm. otherwise what happens is and he knew this the regulators come in the administrator of the company comes in and they, they just dump it and so they're going to be dumping all the collateral that they posted into the open market because they have to get funds back for the depositors, et cetera. So you had to save it. Yep. And I, okay. I suspect something similar with Voyager happened as well. However, so, so his goal is to prevent them from selling FTT. 100%. And it seems that some of these actions started to court some controversy. He seemed to be maybe promoting some regulation that would make things less decentralized yeah. The CZ got the impression that SBF was smack talking him. Like there was, there were some precipitating events that caused sure. CZ and Binance to all of a sudden liquid liquidate sure. all this FTT and effectively cause a run on FTX. Right? If yes. uh, Sunny, if this had Bill been in this color, yeah. <laughs> well, Vinny, if this had uh, or Sunny rather, if this had been, uh, if these assets were all held in Bitcoin or Ethereum or something, and there had been buyers available, then CZ liquidating. A bunch of Bitcoin he yeah. had, or this would not, not have been an issue. Yeah. Exactly. This is right. all based on the fact that Sam, SBF as he's called, printed his own currency and then splashy cashy used that token uh, to do commerce in the world while having this conflict of interest. So there's three possibilities here of how to operate a business in crypto. One is to be in the United States and follow as closely as possible. Uh, to the ex- extent it's possible, securities regulation. Then there's to be on chain and let the algorithms or you know the rule set operate in complete transparency as Bitcoin does, as Ethereum does. And then there's a third choice to have some centralized Luna, I guess falls into this or did at some point. Um, wh- what was the other one that collapsed recently? And, and, and SBF, right? It, it seems like there's a group of people who tried to centralize what should have been uh, essentially uh, a Bitcoin or Ethereum like process. Is, is that correct, Sonny? Yeah, I mean, a lot, kind of Vinny's theme was, was correct here. So I'll just jump in, but let me run with it. I, I think it just comes down to when you print your own money, which is what you know mm-hmm. FTT was, and you start using that as an analog for money. And then someone mm-hmm. wants to turn it into fiat in, in the case of what, you know, say CZ was trying to do yesterday, and there's not enough liquidity there, the price of that thing will crash. And if on the flip side, someone has taken that same printed money and borrowed against it or levered with it or, you know, done any of the financial things that you can do with these type of things, that's going to create a serious problem. And that's what we saw unfold very, very quickly. Listen, Squarespace is the platform where you can build or sell anything. And you all know, I've talked about it forever. I've been talking about Squarespace for a decade. We love it here. We use it for all of our websites. It's beautiful. It's responsive. They have 24 hours, seven day a week, 365 day a year, amazing support. And you know, they have these beautiful templates. So your website looks like you spent a quarter million dollars on it. They've also added all this powerful e-commerce functionality. And what is in that e-commerce functionality? Inventory management APIs, advanced analytics. Now, they have the ability to sell content and membership. This is critical. So for example, maybe you're a piano teacher or you're a chef, you want to sell cooking lessons, you can do that. All of that is built into Squarespace. And this is why Squarespace is such a brilliant company. The team sits there, they study the customers, they talk to the customers, they say, hey, what can we build for you to make your life better and easier? And they just include it in the product. You can add online booking and scheduling too now. Think about that. You've got classes, or maybe you're a hairdresser, your uh, tennis teacher, now you got booking and scheduling built right in. Your clients can see your availability, right? 
and you don't have to worry about coordinating calendars. It's all just done easy peasy lemon squeezy right inside there. Head to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. And when you have friends in your life, well, like, I need to build a website. You don't need to hire a developer. Just go to squarespace.com slash twist and tell your friends, start a free trial. When you're ready to uh, check out and you're going to use it, use the offer code twist. Then you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Related to all this, the noise that got created yesterday, and this has nothing to do with FTT, started to create a lot like a bank run. And you know, that's happened in traditional finance. I think the number that I saw, and you guys can confirm was $6 billion was withdrawn from FTX in the last 24 hours. Now, what that circles back to is nothing to do particularly with FTT, although that's what probably started that run because people got afraid that it was, you know, because of what's happened recently. But now the secondary question that comes in is how much of that 6 billion was actually there or had they further lent out or levered or you know pledged in other places so they could go buy Voyager and these other assets. So this is the intermingling that's happened here that we don't fully understand. It'll take us months to understand what happened here. It's, this is not a simple thing. I mean, let, let, let's just get, I want to go back to basic situation. And when, when yeah. FTX started off, they allowed anyone onto the platform to trade things which US persons are not allowed to trade. So you could log into FTX with a VPN with no limits, no KYC, no AML, and they built their business that way. And so you had a ton of people coming in from America using FTX. It was a fast platform. You could get 100 times leverage or whatever it was. I didn't use it, but I have a ton of friends who are American. And when everyone is trying to clamp down and not let the US citizens use these products, FTX opened it up. And he did it for about a year or two, and he grew the exchange massively. And then they kind of cleaned it up. It's kind of Uber style, Jason. Like, you know, uh, they go, okay, well, we'll have this FTX US site, and then we'll do these other things. And, and but, but, the, but the company culture was regulators, you know, we'll just get around them, and we'll keep doing this stuff. And, and that's the company culture. And then what happened recently was, I think, with all this collapse, Sam was trying to go to Washington and figure out, and you know, donating a billion dollars to the Democrats, whatever. He was trying to like, uh, you know, it's part of the cleanup act, right? You, you first you make your money with a little bit of you know, shade, and then you try and clean it up afterwards. But it, it failed because CZ, was, CZ saw, saw right through him to hmm. some extent and said, well, this is going to affect me. And he, and, and that was it. And Vinny, if I can add something, like, look, like this type of situation is not unheard of in traditional banking. You know, if we remember back to the great financial crisis, we had very similar situations there where banks uh, were not able to handle, a, you know, not a stress test, an actual test of, of the banking system, and they were about to go under, and then the government had to come in and save them. So this type of situation is not isolated to crypto. It's happened in traditional finance for a long time. Now, those banks have stress tests and rules that say that, you know, govern how much they have, you know, what, what kind of holdings they have to have. Uh, around that and that regulation doesn't exist in this space the irony here a little bit spf was out there talking to these regulators and clearly you know they didn't have a one-for-one -one situation because if they did the run on their um assets yesterday wouldn't have created a problem they could have just given everybody their assets back and they would have had less inside their platform and so i think that to me is like the real if you're really kind of zooming into everything that's the real problem yesterday is that people get unnerved they see FTT crashing, then they say, oh, I want to get my Bitcoin out, I want to get whatever asset I may have inside F FTX. And they don't have all those assets. And that's what, you know, they, I think even said today, they've frozen that now. Just mm -hmm. so I'm clear, FTX, the exchange, just so everybody who's listening who maybe is a neophyte uh, to mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. similar to Coinbase or even Robinhood when they trade cryptocurrency. They had $6 billion pulled out, but that $6 billion pulled out is not this FTT token uh that they created i guess essentially like a stable coin their in-house token their in-house no, currency a not a stable to, coin it wasn't a stable not coin. a stable it coin, was right, just a, it's variable no, okay no, so their in-house yeah. token that they use to move money around without fees the six billion taken out were people who just saw the headline oh ftx is having a problem well screw yeah. it i'll just pull down my bitcoin i'll take my ethereum out i'll take my Solana out whatever they're holding so what impact Correct. i wonder does that take because i don't know what their complete holding is at ftx I don't know if that's public, but essentially they're losing all their customer base. Is that what's happening? In and addition they don't have the, to, and they don't have the money to cover those withdrawals. Yeah. So let's just say, you know, the, they we're going to theoretical example, right? This is not accurate, but just for illustrative purposes, let's just say they had taken in 10,000 Bitcoin and 10,000 Ethereum and 10,000 soul. And yesterday people show up and ask for um, those 10,000 back. 
but they had in turn gone and lent that uh, in other places to generate fees or to use that to get the capital to go by Voyager. Like, you know, they're, they're, you know, your bank does that as well. It takes your deposits and goes and lends it out to other people, does mortgages and other things like that. And so we don't know what that ratio was, but whatever that it was, that six billion caused a real problem for them yesterday to that led to, you know, CZ coming in and go ahead, Vinny. I have a bit of speculation here and I'll, I'll throw it out there. Now, the, the, the leaked document that you saw, Molly, mm -hmm. was, it says there's a bunch of Lock Solana. Now, let's just assume it's, you know, it's 800 million or something, but let's just say it's 500 or 300 million or whatever it is. If you, mul if you like multiply that back up for what Solana's price was a year ago, so go 5x on that, that's probably 1.5 to $2 billion in Sol, which they bought at market prices in theory. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't think they would have bought that much Solana at market prices. I think what they would have done is bought the bought the SAFs, the lock SAFs, and they explain would have, what that is. Uh, a SAF. Yeah, what's a lock so, SAF? So, but, but, but basically, basically, it's like a, a you know, with, with with token projects, you can get you can acquire the rights to tokens that they get distributed over time. So let's say it's twenty four months worth of distributions. So you buy that. But Alameda is a trading company. They don't really want to take a position in anything. They they just traders. They, they you know they'll buy buy for five, sell for seven. Like they don't care. So when you buy something with a twenty four month unlock or even longer, whatever it is. You, you want to hedge out. So you wouldn't say, okay, I, I'm guaranteed a hundred sol over the next 24 months. Can I go in, you know, can I go borrow a hundred sol from someone, pay a, uh, pay a fee and then sell that into the market and get the cash right now. And there's a spread that you make and you know, whatever the percentage is. Now, if, the, if uh, it's, a, it's purely like a, you know, a theory, if they did do that, because I think it's very likely that they hedged out the position. Okay. Sell spot by, by, you know, 24 months, whatever. They're effectively net short sol right now. So the people that they gave the collateral to, so if I go to Sonny and borrow 100 sol from him, he's like, what's your collateral? Hey, Sonny, I'll give you three times the value in FTT. And you're like, okay, fine, I'll lend you the sol. Now, if, if the ratio between the two drops too fast, I have to, you, know, you get a margin call, I'm going to either top up or whatever. Once you get down to a liquidation threshold, Sonny is going to sell that FTT and buy Sol back from the market because he take he, you know he's borrowed Sol from one of his customers and he's making a margin on the in interest. This could unravel in a weird way in the next twenty four hours where the market suddenly realizes that these guys sold short a whole bunch of Solana and now the market has to go repurchase it and you could see the price of Solana skyrocket because it went down from very high numbers lower down and my suspicion is that someone sold it heavily down. And I think it was possibly them last year. Mm. That's just a theory. I don't have anything to back it up, but we will see in the next but 24 you, to hours. To be clear, you do own a ton of soul and you were involved in the yes, project I, early I do, on. I, exactly. Yeah. But I, it but sounds I, like I, what you're saying is there are likely, if there if there are some shenanigans, there are others. So there are likely a lot of knock-on yes. effects. Well, the thing is, it's, it's a so what, what's strange to me is how they would have so much lock soul on the balance sheet. Of right. that statement that you saw, eight hundred and sixty-three million is what that leaked sheet said. And Caroline said in the tweet, the CEO of Alameda said that they've got hedged positions. That was mm -hmm. one. That was probably one of their biggest positions. They can't hedge FTT because that that's their position, right? So they would their second biggest position looked like it was Solana, and they may have hedged it. Mm -hmm. Now I, I don't know for certain. It's a speculation, but it makes perfect sense to me that that someone lent them Sol and held FTT as collateral. I'm going to quickly explain one of the crucial types of insurance that every startup needs. It's cyber insurance. Obviously, this covers hacks, which happen more than you think. The world is crazy right now. We all know that cyber hacks are happening constantly. So if you don't have business insurance, you failed one of the first steps of being a founder. And even startups need to get this insurance in place early because crazy things happen. It's not that expensive and it doesn't take a lot of time thanks to our friends at Embroker. Their technology saves you so much time, so much money because prices are 20% lower and you get better coverage than the incumbents. You go from sign up to quote and purchase in just 10 minutes. Think about that. When you work with Embroker, instead of these large, slow incumbents, you're not dealing with big companies that want to talk to you on the phone for hours and hours and then they forget about you, they never call you back. No, you got a professional nimble organization. Sign up takes only days, not weeks. And the process is completely transparent. There's no opaque pricing, no. They're gonna treat you right. 
To instantly buy custom built insurance for startups, go to embroker.com slash twist. While you're there, get an extra 10% off by using the offer code TWIST. Thanks, Embroker. You do a great job over there. The thing I'm interested in, and you can mm -hmm. pick which way you want to take this model, I'll let you direct it. Um, and maybe this is where you're going to go. Didn't a bunch of venture capitalists pour hundreds of millions of dollars into FTX? And wouldn't they, as venture capitalists, have done some level of diligence and understood more fully Molly? Mm -hmm. She's laughing at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, I'm I, just have, I, need my, to... I need my flag. And I, I don't uh -huh. want to pick out any ones that either I'm friendly with or whatever, but no. I specifically have stayed away from this whole mess because <laughs> I was like, I don't understand, you know, what's going on here. But if a bunch of venture capitalists poured hundreds of millions of dollars while this was all going on, would they not have understood these positions and done some sort of risk assessment, Molly? And then if the research team could pull up who's invested and when... I'd like to maybe hear from our panel here uh, some speculation as to what impact this will have on venture capitalists going forward and them wanting to participate in crypto. Because this to me seems like one of the biggest, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think the two biggest bets in crypto, venture, which is a subset of all crypto, were the NFT sites like OpenSea if my memory serves me correctly, and specifically FTX. Am I right? Or am I wrong, Molly, here? I think that's correct. And I think before we even get there, we should yeah. we should sort of say that there's still a pretty outstanding, there was a great Twitter thread today about what is still an outstanding question. So we know that CZ and Binance came in and said, <laughs> and, and and by the way, CZ, I thought was a little salty in his tweet in which he, because SBF had tried to sort of say, everything is fine, there's no liquid liquidity crisis. CZ comes in, tweets, there is a significant liquidity crisis. We are coming in with this rescue. But there is still an outstanding question of Alameda Research, which is not included in this deal between FTX and Binance, and which may still have this huge hole in its balance sheet related to FTT, meaning, to come back to your point, J. Cal, that VCs might still lose a ton more money here if Alameda Research comes apart. Is that accurate? Yeah, what do you think, Sunny? Let's get Sunny in on Yeah, this. what do you think, Sunny? Either of those um, two topics. Yeah, can I actually just frame one thing on top of it, and then I'll, I'll dive into those sure. two things real quick. Mm -hmm. I think one one thing that we really mix up, the in the, the broader industry mix up, there's like sort of, and, and you know, I'm happy to iterate this with you guys, but I think there's three different things to look at. There's cryptocurrencies, there's blockchain technologies, and then there's like kind of Web3 related, you know, um, apps and infrastructure. And that all gets mixed into, into different things. I think when we looked at the biggest class of investment, um, mm -hmm. you're right. It, it covered the exchanges that were trading NFTs. It covered um, our marketplaces and then exchanges. The other thing that a lot of investment has gone into L1s, right? So basically people trying to create the equivalent of like the next Ethereum or the next Solana. And because, and the rationale there is those things become quite liquid as soon as the utility starts running on them. And so those would be the, th I would just add L1s as another area where we've seen a lot of investment go into. Um, you know, we talked about Aptos and a bunch of different things in the previous podcasts, right? And so I think those are the three areas where the, probably the heaviest investment has been so far. But then you have to kind of step back up and say, well, what is cryptocurrency investing? What is blockchain technology investing? And what is like people investing in applications and services built around those technologies? Like, let's call that Web3 apps. And where okay. does FTX fall for you and FTT fall for you? FTT is a startup yeah. that so, is a marketplace, uh, you know, like Coinbase is. And then FTT FTX, is yeah. just a token. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. what, I, what I see is, is this, the marketplace, so FTT is the token. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm not like I'm not a big fan of what's kind of the so let me frame it from from my perspective. I believe FTX and it was primarily a cryptocurrency exchange. Now they've added more features over time. They allow people to to trade. I think in the US you can even start trade stocks on it now, but primarily and first most it was a cryptocurrency exchange. So that was built around the speculation around cryptocurrencies. And Vinny touched on this earlier and we've seen it. And they'd they would list assets that maybe shouldn't be listed or we don't know what's happening behind them and allow people to trade those things. So that falls into the cryptocurrency speculation. And then what they've did along the way is they created their own currency in FTT. So that it all is amongst the same first bucket of like cryptocurrency speculation. 
that it falls into. And then they have a sister company that is a market maker. A market maker to their exchange. Yeah. To their exchange. Exactly. So really, fundamentally, everything we've been saying since the first time we did this roundtable is you financialized before you made the financialization, the product. And right. And it seems like it got a little out of hand. But so fundamentally, before, like fundamentally, when it comes to this entire ecosystem, and then let's talk more about VC, how big a deal is this? I think it's really huge, right? And then Vinny, Vinny, jump in right after because you're about to say something. Like, Why? Like, Why is it huge? Mm -hmm. Well, Sam was in front of all the regulators, right? With from the funny pictures of the shoes not tied properly to him speaking in front of folks. You know, Jake, how we sat in a session with him with a bunch of really, you know, uh, high profile institutional people. LPs, right? At and a private so event. He, we won't say the name of. A, we will not, right? But um, you know, these type of things, like he was, he was he was one everyone was pointing to as, you know, credibility. He was donating a lot of money to um, the political uh, parties. Uh, and so this really shakes the stability of, of the ecosystem pretty heavily. So because he was so credible, because he was so out front, he was supposed to be the golden child in a way that yep. would take crypto from this dark alley put it in the light, mm -hmm. and he would lead it to a clean regulatory environment, which yeah. when I did a favor for a friend and interviewed him mm -hmm. at this event, which I won't say the name of, because I was asked not to, I, um, and it was unpaid, by the way, Molly, I made $0.0, .0 oh. for this incredible interview. Why? With friends like these. We can't even run uh, it. Can't, I can't, can't <laughs> run it. I mean, it's just lost in time. I mean, there's this recording out here. because. Well, somebody can leave. Um, I'm not asking them to, but why would no, that no. be interesting? Anyway, this just happened two or three weeks ago, Molly. And so at that interview, yeah. there was a lot of discussion. I kept going back to regulation and he is he, he had set up, I think he was the number two donor in this cycle of elections in, on the Democratic side. It was either one or two. And it was very interesting that he was going to be the one to clean it up. And now the person who was meeting with all these people, Vinny, is the person who blew it up. That takes huge credibility away from crypto. This makes anybody who was saying, hey, let me get in here and work with this guy to clean it up. And it blew up in their laps. Am I, am I correct, Vinny? Yeah, I mean, or is that too look, cynical? The, the issue is that, like, I thought it was really rich for a guy to be up there, you know, trying to talk to regulators when he flouted all the laws initially when he set up his company and he's, he's based offshore, based in the Bahamas, throwing money around at politicians. I thought it was kind of weird. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's just disingenuous, you know. I mean, obviously, he was running a facade and he knew it. And when the market started tanking, you know, he was kind of scrambling. And when Celsius blew up and 3AC blew up and, it, you know, it's contagion. Contagion spreads. It just takes a while sometimes. But, but, but Bitcoin's on a precipice right now. I mean, it's trying to hold the 18,000 mm -hmm. level. It, it did a bit of a spike down. Um, it's climbing back up. This could be the bottom. Because quite frankly, after this, there's just no one else that's big enough to, you know, except there's, Binance. There's no one left. Except Binance. There's no one, right. left. No one left, right? Yeah. So, it has to be. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the, this, this, is the, this is probably the bottom. And if the bottom doesn't, uh, if the bottom holds, it's a double bottom from the earlier crash earlier this year. That's actually a good thing. And I think we're up from there. But um, if the bottom doesn't hold. Why is a double hold, bottom a good thing? Why is a double I mean, bottom just a, a good thing? From a, from a technical analysis perspective, uh, double bottoms tend to show that there's lots of buy support below a certain level. And so if we hit, you know, we, we're, really, we're really in the double bottom zone right now. If it breaks, then crypto has basically gone backwards. Look, we're going backwards anyway for a while. There's, you know, the developer needs to slow down. There's just, there's too many people trying to make money out of crypto and crypto doesn't make money by itself. So uh, the, the, you know, the industry is pretty big, big ecosystem. I, I mean, I still think it's, I, th I still think the play is Bitcoin, funny enough, right now. I think with all this drama that's happened globally in crypto, I put, put a tweet about it today. I think Bitcoin is probably the best risk-adjusted uh, bet right now in crypto. So owning Bitcoin is um, you know, reasonably safe. It's going to be, you know, it's a global, effectively, it's, it's a reserve asset for the crypto industry. And, you know, I've had my criticism of Bitcoin, but I think it's it's, it's, it's got a lot less um, dependencies. And in fact, if you're looking at a hard currency f to borrow money against, you should like lend money against Bitcoin, not FTT, for example, right? And so that's the issue. Sonny, I saw you give a little head tilt there. Does your neck hurt or do you disagree with this Bitcoin assessment? 
No, no, no. Sorry. I, n- never. I, I don't ever disagree with the Bitcoin assessment. I think like it, it to me is just a different class of asset now. It's not mm-hmm. related to any of these other yeah. things that we're seeing. And so when we kind of yeah. start merging them, it's, it's, it's unrelated for me. I think it's uncorrelated to all this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. It's uncorrelated. Kinda. It's actually, it's reasonably uncorrelated. And he's like, yeah, that's well the right point. Now. That's yeah. the good. That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I yeah. think I think I think the, these are the, this is probably like let's just keep keep this in mind. Like Bitcoin right now is ten percent below below the peak five years ago, and before you adjust for all the inflation that's happened in the U.S. dollar and just the time and how the network's been built out, it's actually pretty cheap at these levels. If you assume that you know, like I mean, fi- like five years ago, Bitcoin hit twenty thousand bucks. It's at eighteen k right now. I, I just think that, you know, as a former <laughs> former Bitcoin maxi, I'm like, and then I got reformed. I'm kind of heading back. But I, I wouldn't say I'll ever be a maxi again, but Bitcoin is uh, Bitcoin is probably going to be the, the, the saving grace for crypto because it's just, you know, it's just widely held. Well, Molly, here's that one year chart we were just referring to with the double bottom. If you remember yeah. a year ago, uh, this is an exactly one year chart. So this shows November of last year. Remember, we hit that 70k ish uh, moment, and people are like, wow, it's going to a million dollars a coin, it comes crashing down to the 40. And then comes crashing down again to 30. And that was arguably a double bottom there. And then uh, the triple down to 1918, which is where we live today. Mm -hmm. So this is either two or two and a half bottoms, as Vinny is talking about. But your point, Vinny, if I may summarize, it is you saw support at 40k. People wanted to own it there. You saw some support at 30, and you saw and you see very long support at 18 to 20. And even if it goes down to 12 to 15, you're suspecting there's going to be support there as well. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think Bitcoin is uh, look Bitcoin dominance should go over 50 percent. The crypto industry shouldn't be operating with a Bitcoin dominance of less than 50 percent. Dominance basically is the measure of the relative value of crypto cryptos market caps. I think the top 150 to Bitcoin, and that should always be, in my opinion, above 50. If it's not, if it's below 50, there's a lot of speculation going on, and especially in a in a tight monetary environment. 50 percent should be the minimum. So. Bitcoin, you know, either alt's going to collapse further and, you know, and Bitcoin's dominance goes up or Bitcoin's undervalued. I, I think it's the latter. I think the alt's have been habit. Nobody's selling, nobody wants to sell stuff at these levels anyway. So I just think Bitcoin needs to go up in value. And I think Bitcoin, you know, if you look at what's happening in the rest of the world with fiat and government printing and debt and everything else, I, I, Bitcoin's probably the right play right now. So is Bitcoin, this might sound kind of dumb, but is it decoupling? In some ways, I mean, and is it decoupling? Like, or do you feel like it's so safe because it has so much institutional backing at this point? No, no it's, it's safe because no one can mess with it. <laughs> you know, someone like Sam Bankman-Fried, like, you know, if he had to go borrow against Bitcoin, we wouldn't be mm-hmm. having this issue right now because mm-hmm. the people who, you know, they would liquidate the Bitcoin into liquid markets and the, and everything would be fine. It wouldn't be liquidity issues. The the moment you start, the, the further and further away you move from Bitcoin, the more you know, volatile. The, I mean, it, it's 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 highly it's just highly leveraged place. Take it from me: hiring developers is really hard, and so many startups struggle to hire fast enough to keep up with demand. So Lemon.io is going to help you hire better developers, and they're going to help you do it faster. Okay, that's the key. They have a network of engineers from Europe and Latin America, and every candidate has been tested and interviewed by their team. Here's how Lemon.io will help you. No more wasting time with unqualified candidates. No, these are all vetted and tested. And you're going to have easy access to global talent. And they can get your developer up and running. You're not going to believe this in under a week. And of course, it's more affordable. I can't tell you how many companies I know are burning money every month, but their product's not improving. And if your product doesn't improve, well, then you can't make money. You can't hit your milestones. You need developers to hit your milestones. You don't hit your milestones. Investors will not put more money in and you won't get revenue coming in from your customers. Okay, so if you want to save time, you want to get a great developer, you want to save money, all you have to do is go to lemon.io slash twist, and they'll give you 15% off your first four weeks. That's right, 15% off your first four weeks. When you go to lemon l e m o n dot io slash twist. It is so hard to find developers they are so expensive and that's why you need lemon.io and a lot of times like i feel like you know in this industry we just relive the moments of the past like this is the difference between trading like a you know an s&p 500 stock or like a you know otc 
a stock, right? Pink, uh, sheet. You know, pink slips yeah. or something. Pink sheets, exactly, right? Where, yeah. you know, um, you can see those stocks have tremendous vi- volatility when they don't have a lot of liquidity. And I think this is what really just happened with um, with FTT. And, and then what's tied behind it is people were allowing them to use FTT uh, as, as like something that's quite liquid. Even someone as sophisticated as CZ, you got to remember, he took $2 billion in FTT as part of his return on his investment in FTX. So there's a lot of sophisticated players here that are all kind of intermingled into the, the same story. He didn't say, hey, if you- Some you know, might you argue a shell game. Some might I mean, argue, it, yeah. Some might argue some a bit of a, a shell game going. They did, yeah. did, uh, one thing I'm unclear of, Molly, did mm-hmm. CZ actually sell his FTT and get fiat and cash or Bitcoin? Was he able to get out some amount of it? Did he find a buyer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, his FTT yesterday, he dumped it. He dumped it, but dumped that, it that's, for that's what? what call, that, that's what called it. That's what, called that's what caused break. the run. Yeah. So he got cash. Somebody he got cash is the bag holder. Something. Yeah. Somebody was on the other side of that trade, bought it, and it's down 75% now. Okay, let's wrap Presumably. with the impact on and, and the venture. And yeah. the, well, the CEO question. of Alameda, the CEO of Alameda offered $22 for it and a tweet as right. well. What is it at now? Five, three. I think. Whoa, oh, there you three, go. Okay. three, 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 three. <laughs> I yeah. wonder if they're the ones who bought it. So wait, if they bought all that, they would then have been depleting their cash reserves, clearing his position, and all of a sudden they're giving so, so, so their enemy Jason, all of their ammunition? Jason, let me explain to you what happened yesterday. So basically the margin call number was, I think, 21, okay? So at 21, you get a margin call from whoever you've borrowed money from, and you have to put up more collateral. So they couldn't let it go below 22. So 21 was like the threshold, but they – so then it dropped down. And it hit 21. What then happens is now they're in margin call, so they're going to get liquidated if it drops any further. And the number, I think, was 14. So the moment it hit 14 today, then the liquidations happened. And so anyone who was holding FTT were just dumping it and selling it because they had to. Because they remember, when you borrow money from someone, typically they give, they, they, let's say, for example, it was Solana, right? So you go borrow Solana and give FTT. When it hits a certain number, you're at risk as the effectively the, the middleman, the transaction, because you, you took Solana from one of your clients and you lent it to, to, um, if you know, to Alameda and now the price of the collateral isn't worth it. So you got to sell that collateral and buy back what you, what you lent to replace it. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're on the hook. Um, and so that, that's why, I, I mean, as this thing hits, so I think it's gone down so fast that some of the collateral holders couldn't get rid of the, the FTT fast enough. And now they're all underwater. So we're going to find out very soon whether or not, well, first of all, we find out who these lenders are. Because it's not, guys, this is not 50 million, 100 million. This is billions. There's someone out there, there's billions of dollars of loans on the books right now that are going to get pennies on the dollar back. And it was collateralized by FTT. And now that's my presumption right. based upon the leaks that I've seen so far. I don't know. I haven't seen anything audited. I don't know. But on the presumption that there's three to $5 billion out there, it's... They're sitting with, and it's going down to zero very soon. They're sitting with no collateral and uh, Alameda owes them money. We don't know what Alameda's balance sheet looks like, whether the NAV exceeds, you know, whether the assets exceed the liabilities or not. We don't know. We're going to figure out where, where these liabilities sit. We just don't know where they are right now. All right. Well, we do know that some of the jet fuel, let's do the VC part of this, and then we'll let you get to your dinner there in Lisbon. Okay. Let's yeah. just look at FTX. January yeah. 2020. Mm-hmm. FTX raises $40 million at a $1.2 billion valuation. Investors include Pantera Capital, Evangelion, never heard of them, Bitscale Capital, BR Capital. They 15x valuation in 20 months. By July 2021, FTX raises a billion dollars at $18 billion. Investors include Altimeter, Toma Bravo, Tom Brady, Tamasek, Sequoia, Multicoin SoftBank, Tiger, and Coinbase VC. Then, three months later, more jet fuel. They raise at a 40% higher valuation, $420 million at a $25 billion valuation in October of 2021 with Tiger, Sequoia, Paradigm, Temasek, Lightspeed, BlackRock, Bond, Iconic. You can see that as we go on, these names are getting more and more recognizable. And then finally, in January 2022, they raise at yet another 30% higher valuation. $500 million raise at a $32 billion valuation. Investors are Insight, Lightspeed, Paradigm, Tiger, and SoftBank. 
I mean, yeah. that's, that's how you all blow going up a bubble, to zero, right? right? But I personally passed on those rounds. I was offered positions. And I didn't so take now it. it's it's going to go to zero now, right? This thing gets liquidated. CZ owns it. People get some equity in no, finance. No, those guys. No, those guys go. I, I, I personally, I personally think it's all going to go to zero. Uh, the equity equity holders are going to lose out. Yeah. Wow. Because 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 CZ stepped in to protect depositor funds. Because this is the thing. Like, effectively, leverage was used. Okay, so you know, using the FTT tokens, it's not hard. It's not hard collateral. It's leverage. You know, it's like it's like it's like Jay. Can I can I like borrow a thousand bucks from you? I'll give you an IOU. That's leverage. You know, yeah. Because you don't have a collateral for it. It's just an IOU. And FTT FTT was just IOUs from from FTX. And so if you wipe out all the leverage, they've got nothing. I mean, you know, at the very least, they've just lost a seven billion dollar asset in one day. Wow. So the, well, and the that was on their balance sheet. So the balance sheet's basically tilted. They basically have liabilities now and no assets because that whole so thing's been marked down to zero. Why did you pass? Well, I mean, I, I just never believed in the, the – uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I never was. I never have been. Uh, Sonny, as we wrap here, uh, a year from now when we look back at this moment in time, will this be uh, framed as – the the end of crypto the beginning of crypto 2.0 what when we we're here a year from now we have some clarity and distance and maybe they do the post-mortem and they figure out what the hell happened here what is this going to look like is somebody going to jail uh is sam going to be um you know like uh, our friend uh, do kwan at luna on the run what is this what will this look like in 12 we, 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 we never wish that on people but i i think you know not. we'll just come back to something which is like a fundamental. I think there's a lot of goodness that can come out of regulation. Here's another reason that we've seen now in terms of limits and rules that the government provides to protect, you know, the depositors and the users of these platforms. So I, th I think we're going to see more of that here. I think what we'll also see is a push back towards sort of decentralized technology, right? You know, at the end of the day, the reason we don't know what's happened here is that these exchanges are centralized. And we don't have a full view as sort of what blockchain promises us to say how much is levered and how much of the deposits are there and what's been lent out against it. And so when you go into decentralized, like the DeFi world, you can see that. And so I think we'll see a push towards that. And there's been a lot of folks that have been saying that's been a key problem in, in the ecosystem is that we are really been celebrating centralized exchanges. Uh, and that, you know, those <laughs> kind of, are, sorry, go ahead, Jacob. Well, I was just going to say, so we, we trust decentralized technologies, trust in regulation, do not trust yeah. centralization and individuals. Vinny, the final word for you, what will this look like in a year? I, I, I just posted it in the chat. So five years ago, unfortunately, my, my Oracle uh, vision is a little too far ahead sometimes. I posted a tweet saying mm. exactly what Sunny just said. I'm almost certain, for those who are not watching us live, I'm almost certain we will see a top 25 crypto exchange fail or be shut down in the coming months. This will be the catalyst for the emergence of decentralized exchanges. And this is a key theme I'm expecting in 2018. Yes, yeah, so yeah, ahead, ahead of your time, Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. four, four years too soon. <laughs> four years, uh, four years uh, too soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the but the the principle is exactly what, as as Sunny said. Like that, we have to move to decentralized exchanges, and um and and, and by the way, like you know, I might as well plug this while I'm at it. Like this is what civic has been building, right? We decentralized on chain KYC. We worked with like so, uh, you know uh, we have the Solarize Dex, where it's a decentralized exchange with KYC built into it on chain. Like the stuff is out there. Nobody wants to use it. They still want to use uh, centralized exchanges, but they don't realize when using centralized exchange, you have no visibility, no transparency, and this happens. And we keep making the same mistakes over and over as a community. And it's just got to stop, guys. We just got to move to transparency. Yeah, we should All say right. one last thing before we let you go. FTX investors tell Dan Primack the company has not yet sent them any information on the deal hmm. and says all he knows is what he's seeing on Twitter. So, wow. So those great, VCs who put in I billions mean, of dollars not, are getting communication. Wow. Don't there's even there's know. nothing to send. There's nothing a due diligence. It's, it's a non-binding LOI. It's, a, it's an expression of interest to acquire it, to try and stabilize the markets, which it hasn't really done. Let's just be frank. It hasn't stabilized anything. Things are just getting, getting worse. FDT um, went CZ, from CZ, seven CZ to three while we were talking. Yeah. CZ, CZ can walk away tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Holy CZ cow. can walk away at any point in time. So, so let's be frank. There's like, there's nothing you tell investors. And if you're an investor watching this, all you're looking at, all you should do right now is say, okay, it's a write off and move on. You don't spend any more time thinking about it. Don't stress about it. If you have FTX shares, what will be will be. Okay, so that's it. That's it. 
LOIs, or as we call them in the business, letters of insignificance. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for doing this emergency pod and educating everybody here. I mean, thank you. literally, when, I, when, a v, when an early stage startup says, I got three LOIs, I say, great, letters of nothing. <laughs> Let's, let me know when somebody puts a deposit down. This is going to be crazy, and it's just so great to have you two gentlemen come at a moment's notice to explain this all to us. Uh, and it actually makes me, I got to say, Molly, while the centralized stuff collapses, it makes me more attracted to the power of the decentralized options that uh, these gentlemen are working on and the power of regulation and centralized ones. I, I, I do wonder if this means, hey, Coinbase, uh, you know, as a public company and, and here, uh, you know, in the, in the US market becomes more valuable because, yeah. hey, you know, <laughs> If you're operating here and not the Bahamas, mm, you know, you, you got a lot more at risk the, the management team and the board over there are uh, insignificant risk. They can't go on the lam if in fact, that's what Doquan has done. Molly, any final thoughts while we're up? Coinbase is back up. So oh, maybe it's, it's a sign. I just checked <laughs> my tiny little portfolio and the app is working again. So maybe it's go. a sign. No, I, I, I'm with you. I think the future is, I talk about this with energy markets all the time. The future is decentralized. All right. There's Thank too much risk in centralization. And we'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.